Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We are in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, and we resume our study in verse 50. So get your Bible, open it up to Luke 23, verse 50. We'll begin right after I remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen. Four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. It's all there for you at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Bring your Bible, a hunger for God's word. You don't need anything else. And let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke 23, verse 50. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, and he was a good man and just, which was a rare thing to be on the high court, the Jewish council. We only know of two people that were godly men on that in that group. He's one of them. Joseph of Arimathea is one of them, Nicodemus the other. The rest of them, as far as we know, hated Jesus and were responsible for his crucifixion, humanly speaking, if you don't consider the fact that he paid for my sins and that's why he died. But the players in this horrible story of torture and death, the religious leaders were front and center, spearheading the whole thing of their own free will. So Joseph, he was a good one, though. Joseph was a decent man. Again, one of the religious rulers. He was kind. He cared about justice, which was a rare thing among the religious rulers. Verse 51. The same <clears throat> had not consented to the council and the action of them, he was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. So he was an honest, godly man who cared about truth. He wasn't concerned about being popular. He wasn't concerned about having attention drawn to himself like the rest of the religious leaders. And so he had no part in the condemning of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Joseph may have been a religious leader, and he was, really, in the true sense of the word. He was a religious leader. He did what was right. He stood for what was right. And that's why he was against putting Christ to death, if he knew about it at all before it was happening. Verse 52, this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. <clears throat> Joseph knew he knew that it was a horrible crime to have the Lord Jesus Christ murdered. That was bad enough, and he simply would not allow the Lord's body to remain in the open where it possibly could be abused even more by those who killed him or the animals, the birds coming in tearing Jesus' flesh apart. He wouldn't allow that. So Joseph takes a risk, really does. When you consider the fact that Rome executed Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea comes out, goes to Rome, says, can I have the body of Jesus so I can give him a decent burial? That was risky business back in those days to give a decent burial to someone who the Romans just crucified. Because that, in essence, puts Joseph on the side of the criminal instead of Rome. It took faith. It took a true belief in the truth about Jesus Christ and true faith and a godly attitude. And Joseph did not care. And we see this over and over again with people who sincerely come to Christ. They just, in the Gospels, we just, they don't care. They don't care what anybody thinks of them. 
They don't care what happens to them. They're going to serve Jesus Christ. They're going to do what is right by Jesus, regardless of the cost. And that's what it takes to become a Christian today. This idea that you can just tack Jesus, it's a modern evangelical idea that you can just tack Jesus onto your lifestyle and it's and, and you're saved, you're a Christian, no problem. No thought of making a commitment to Christ, no thought of repentance of sin, turning away from sin so you can sincerely, with all your heart, turn to Christ and make him your Lord and Savior. No thought of any of that. That is just a bunch of baloney. It is a lie. It is creating a lot of false Christians who have a false, a false sense of security. You look at Joseph, you look at the Apostle Paul, you look at Peter and the arrest of the apostles, you look at John the Baptist, you look at all these people, you look at blind Bartimaeus. None of these people cared what anybody thought of them. They were crying out to Jesus. They were serving Jesus. They were honoring him. And if you're truly saved, you've truly repented and received Christ as Lord and Savior, that will be your attitude as well. It doesn't mean that you and I won't fall into sin. Of course we will, but we feel terrible about it. And we get back on track because we do have that attitude in spite of our weaknesses in the flesh. But here's Joseph putting it all on the line to ask for the body of Jesus, risking his own life to give a decent burial to somebody that Rome just crucified as a criminal. 53, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone in which never a man before was laid. I think that's interesting. And let me give you a reason why I think that was so important. Back in Old Testament days, God raised a man from the dead when that man's dead body was thrown into the tomb of a prophet and made contact with the prophet Elijah. As soon as that dead man's body touched the bones of Elijah, that dead man was raised from the dead. Instantly, God is covering all bases here. Jesus is laid in a brand new tomb. Nobody else had ever been in that tomb. God didn't want his enemies to attribute the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is going to happen in three days, to anything, even something like that. And therefore, Jesus was buried in a new tomb, never been used before. Verse 54, and that day was the preparation and the Sabbath was coming on. Every Friday was preparation day, preparation for the Sabbath. So it was a day when people prepared for the weekly Sabbath, which occurred on Saturday. And it actually started on sundown, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. That was the weekly Sabbath. So all work that needed to be completed had to be done before sundown on Friday. So that's why Joseph made haste to ask for the body of Jesus. Because, you know, remember, he died at 3 o'clock. I don't know what time it got dark there. No daylight saving time, I suppose. So who knows what time it got dark? Probably pretty early. So he had to hurry up, take the body down, get it wrapped up, and put in the tomb before the Sabbath hit, before the first star came out. 55. And the women also, who came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. So these women, they paid careful attention to Joseph and where he laid the Lord Jesus Christ. They had plans to return to the tomb on Sunday morning after the Sabbath was over so that they could anoint the body of Jesus Christ with spices and oils. And that's why they paid such close attention to exactly where Joseph laid our Lord's body. 56. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. They rested. 
the Sabbath law prohibited, prohibited these women from returning to the tomb to anoint the body until Sunday. God had everything figured out. Everything figured out. Because Christ would be raised on the third day, as he said, and the women were forced to wait until the third day to return to the tomb, which will make them witnesses to the empty tomb and to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as at least Mary would be one who saw him right outside the tomb. So everything is going according to God's plan. His death paid for our sins. His resurrection, will be, which will be witnessed by hundreds of people before he ascends into heaven, is the proof that his death on the cross actually did pay for our sins. It was God's stamp of approval on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we'll see that next time. One of my favorite parts of Scripture, maybe my favorite, most favorite part, the resurrection story. It's good. Good stuff. Don't miss next time, okay? In the meantime, you can study all of God's Word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going on five. Bring your Bible, hunger for God's word, that's all you need. And if you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, very simple, pray for me and God's word. Do it right now, right this second, because you're thinking about it. Write a note, stick it on your refrigerator door. Every time you see it, you'll be reminded to pray for me and God's word again. Put those notes everywhere so you'll be seeing them all the time and praying. That makes you such an important part of Scripture verse by verse. And also... When you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a very important part of this ministry. Let's get out God's word together as much as we can to as many as we can for as long as we can. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.